How you doing, Kevin? Hey man, Rich, I'm doing great. I'm still on cloud nine. Not bad. But uh, it, it was a phenomenal week. Thank you. you. Yeah, walk me through. Uh, what, what do you take out of that weekend, Kevin? Uh, <clears throat> well, just how special and how elite you know, the being a Hall of Famer really is. And how special it was for me to be able to play in the NFL. But the biggest thing that, and I knew it because I wrote my speech, but even now to see my teammates and friends from all walks of life show up to, rec- you know, to be a part of the celebration, to really understand that it's about your teammates and about relationships. And, uh, and those are the people that kind of help you grow to be who you become. Yeah, and, and now your relationship with your own uh, teammates from the Canton class of 2019, I thought, it, again, the word beautiful is the only one that comes to mind, that uh, you all got together and donated money to the hall uh, in the name of Pat Bolin and handed the check to, and you were the one to hand the check to uh, David Baker, Kevin. Walk me through how that all came together. Yeah, so every year when you get elected to the Hall of Fame, prior to, you know, during the spring or whatever, they bring you out to the Hall itself. They do a site visit for you to kind of see the Hall of Fame, to, you know, visit where you're going to have your post, your reception and stuff like that. And then, but they also give you, Mr. Baker, you know, the dude's a walk encyclopedia. And there's a, there was a donor wall, and he made it a point to stop at that wall and show us the name of one man who volunteered at the Hall of Fame for a bunch of years. Him and his wife both did. And they sold their house. I think the Hall of Fame has bought some of the houses around the property so they can expand the, the facilities. Mm-hmm. And a man, because of his connection and affiliation with the Hall of Fame and his love for his wife and her love for the Hall of Fame, they took some of the proceeds. After she passed away, he sold the house. But he donated some of the proceeds from the house sale to the Hall of Fame. Now, I was looking on the wall. There may have been a couple of players and maybe, you know, management-type people on the wall, but I didn't recognize any of them. And I just like, you know, it's a shame. The number of players that come to the Hall and the Hall of Famers that, you know, Somebody's name's not on there that a player would recognize. And I said, Tracy and I talked about it. So wouldn't that be cool if our class came together and donated, you know, donated something to the Hall of Fame in recognition of our class? And so that kind of we was started then. That was back in April. And then, uh, of course, Pat Bowen passed away. And then I thought, you know, it would be really nice now if the rest of the class did this in memory of him. And so I sent an email out to everybody and pitched the idea. And everybody was on board, and um, it was my opportunity. You know, and it was kind of unusual because I, I asked the Hall of Fame if I could have five minutes during the, the State of the Hall address with Mr. Baker to address the crowd, and uh, he wanted to know why. I said, well, it's just five minutes. So I want to give something to the Hall. You didn't even tell so, him? Huh? No. no you uh-uh. <laughs> and, and so and it, the other thing, too, is there's a decorum that you take as a first-time Hall of Fame. Well, you know, when you first get in the Hall, that during that week, it's about you, but the older guys are already Hall of Famers. They make you know that you're not a Hall of Famer until you get that jacket and the bust. And so for me to speak out early in the process during the week, I mean, I had to I address those guys first, letting them understand. I understand, you know, that as a rookie Hall of Famer that I'm supposed to be seen and not heard, but I had this presentation to make. And when they found out I was giving a check, they all backed off. <laughs> <laughs> So it was pretty good. It was good. Yeah, man. And, and as I mentioned, uh, you set the bar already for future classes, and there's one that might be 20, 20 strong next year. So uh, good for you to, to start that tradition. Kevin Mawai, Hall of Famer here. Um, so who, in, in the 16-plus years that I've done this, usually a Hall of Famer realizes that it, it is don't, it's there not just with the jack of the bus, but when you see another Hall of Famer welcoming you, who was that one for you that blew you away? From this weekend, uh, Kevin. You know what? Floyd Little was one that I had met him before, but I saw him in the lobby hotel, and that we met and we talked, and he's like, "You're you're going to be one of the good ones," and me, one of the good members, the one of the guys that that as a hall will represent the Hall of Fame well and stuff like that, and that that really touched me. It, it was really you know nice of him to say that, and I just loved him. I mean. No, you know, know of him and never really knew him, but for him to say that to me early in that week, it just meant a lot to me. Um, of course, I've known most of those, those guys that have gone in the recent years and as teammates or, or opponents, but, but the one Floyd Little was the one of the ones, and Joe Green 
You know, I played on Don Shula's staff in the Senior Bowl, and Joe Green was the defensive line coach at the time. So I've known him for quite a few years. Right. And now knowing him as a Hall of Famer is pretty special. A few more minutes left with Kevin Mawai. And now, uh, you know, we all, we know the, the what next. You're an offensive analyst for Arizona State football, Kevin. How, how do you analyze a game plan when you already know you play to win the game, Kevin? How does that work? Well, I know, I know that uh, – what it takes to, to win a game. I know what it takes to be the best. And, I, and my role as an analyst with Herm's staff is to get these guys to see the greatness in themselves. And everybody's got different levels of greatness. And you know, as a mentor, as a future coach, my job is to help them get as much out of that as they can and be able to pour it out onto other people. And so that's what my mission is, is to grow men and, and, and encourage them to be the best that they're capable of being. And, uh, and so that's what I'm going to do. How, how, more like, you know, how, did sorry, the, how did the locker room take it back in the day when, when that Herm rant, that famed, you play to win the game? Oh, Hello. we loved it. Well, we were 0-6 at the time that he gave the speech. And uh, we ended up making the playoffs that year. So <laughs> uh, they, I would say the team took it pretty well. So it worked. And then again, you know, um, you know, Kevin, just seeing that, that this is kind of a cherry on top for you. Um, you know, part of, you know, your leadership skills has been over the years. And I've got two minutes left uh, with the Players Association. Do you have any insight on what's going on right now between the NFL and the PA with a new CBA coming up? I, I do not. I knew that they, they had a uh, negotiation session a few weeks back, and I've been asked about it and my opinions on it, and I won't give them. Uh, whatever opinion I have really doesn't matter because what matters is the leadership that right now. And uh, those guys got to make decisions based on what their priorities are. For me, I knew that the, what I would do, what my, my the leaders would do, wouldn't affect us, but it would affect the future of the game. And um, my encouragement to them is just do the same. Let them know that, that, that they're not doing it for themselves. They're doing it for the guys that come after them. And so they got to figure out what their priorities are, stick to their guns, and fight their ass off to keep what they want. And would you one day want to take a leadership role on this front again, no, Kevin? No, no, I've done it. I, I don't like the politics of it. I want to be on the field. I want to be around football players, and I want to be able to teach them the craft that I know and that I love so much. And and uh, maybe one of those guys will emerge and become leaders down the road. But I have no desire to put a coat and tie on and sit across the negotiation tables with owners. Well, great job with the speech, Kevin. It was just beautiful what you said to your folks and the message you gave and you know, calling your, your presenter hot. You know, that was great. <laughs> smoking is hot. I'm sorry. Yeah, I left. Smoking is hot life out here. So. <laughs> I forgot that. I forgot that adjective. My bad. My extra, you had the extra, the extra mile on the adjective. And, you know, I, and getting to know you uh, when we first turned the lights on on NFL Network and then seeing the rest of your career, it's been a pleasure to be able to say uh, that I've gotten to know you and I look forward to seeing you in Canton every year. Well, thanks so much, man. And, you know, I know you do the radio, TV, and all that kind of stuff, but you're not just a personality. I consider you a friend, Rich, and I thank you so much. Man. You, you the man, Kevin. Say, say hi to Herm for me. Say hi to Herm. I will do. I'm, I'm actually headed down to the practice field, and I'm wearing my gold jacket. Are you Are you really? I, I, yeah, I'm purposely on this radio show now, so I don't have to be there for walkthrough right now. <laughs> and as they're starting walkthrough, I'm coming down the hill – with my coaching gear on, I got gold socks on, gold shirt, Arizona State gold, and I got. I'm wearing my. I'm wearing my jacket. All right, tw- tweet us a photo, Kevin. We'll, we'll, I will definitely. I'll definitely do that. Send that out at Kevin Mawai right now. Say hi to Herm for me. You take care. I will take care, man. You got it. I'm glad we could be of service to Kevin Mawai to get out of walkthrough. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on Directv for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.